One of the things I've been writing about a little bit lately is the risk of excessive data, particularly internal implementation data, exposed publicly. And in fact, one of the things I wrote about a little while back was the ease with which Elmar logs can be found on Google. So this is E-L-M-A-H, as in error logging modules and handlers. And it's a fantastic tool for ASP.NET. It allows you to get lots of nice diagnostics information when things go wrong. And theoretically, as a server administrator or an app owner, you can go in and securely access this. Now, the problem is a lot of the time those logs are left public because it's so easy to use and so easy to configure it to be remotely accessible. It's so easy to screw it up and leave it remotely accessible to anybody. So I thought I'd give just a bit of an example of what can be done when Alma logs are public. Now, by the time you see this, this particular site will not have Alma logs because I'm not publishing this until they fix it. But just to give you an example, Black & Decker has elmar.axd, which is publicly standing. So this is capturing every single internal error message that is not handled uh, and is then recorded by the system and is made available via this very convenient user interface. So the example I thought I'd do is I am going to pick another window over here and I'm going to log in to Black & Decker with my own account, which I've just created. So let's go to blackanddecker.com and that will get logged on well it will load the page and now we'll log on okay so let's log ourselves in now of course they don't have any transport layer protection here either which isn't real good but uh, you know that's that's their decision but this is what we want to focus on today so we will log in and any second now we should be online so now we are authenticated now, of course, in able to keep me authentic, or rather in order to keep me authenticated on a website over HTTP, which is this stateless protocol, is I have a cookie set in my browser. In fact, I've got a few different cookies. It makes it very easy to see with this little edit this cookie plugin. And among those cookies, I've got things like the ASP.NET session ID, which is pretty common. That's set whenever you put anything into session state in ASP.NET. And another cookie just here that we'll look at more in just a moment. Now, this is me logged in, so I expect to be able to see my own cookies. What we want to look at, though, is what an attacker might be able to do on a website where Alma logs are exposed. And what I want to do, so let's put the attacker hat on, is if I can get an authenticated user to cause an exception on that site, an unhandled exception, and then go into Alma and inspect their logs, I can then go through and have a look at what those session cookies might be, or rather what the cookies that were maintaining the session might be, and then I can hijack it. So the way I'm going to do this is let's just imagine, so we'll take a hypothetical situation here. I'm an attacker. I'm going to jump over to my Twitter, and what I'm going to do is say, um, hey, can I get a quick bit of help for a demo? Just need a click. And what we'll do here is we'll put in the website, so blackanddecker.com. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to malform this URL. So you can see here that what I've done is actually put an angle bracket here because an angle bracket is an illegal character. So when someone types this in, it is going to cause an exception on the server. And I'm going to copy that because I'm going to type it in myself in just a second. So let's do that. The URL is right, blackanddecker.com. Okay, go. So we should be getting some clicks on there now. So I'm going to move that guy out of the way for a moment. Now let's imagine me as a victim, and again I'm logged in as myself up here. Let me enter that URL and we will see what happens. So there we go. Now we're getting an error message. Something went wrong. And in fact we can see here that we're getting the default sort of ASP.NET error handling. So that's just fine. But what it means is, is that this would now be logged in that error log. So now we're going back looking at Elmar, we're not authenticated. Let's go and have a look at that link which I just posted. Okay, so again, this is the data that you really, really, really don't want public. And what I'm going to do is go down to the cookies and somewhere in here, in fact, we can see this has got my cookie because it's got my email address. So, and there are people retweeting or clicking on that. So what we're going to do now is look at what me as an attacker, or I as an attacker, can do with those cookies. And it's very, very simple. So I'm going to take another incognito session of Chrome. And 
I will drop it over on the other monitor in the moment, but I'm going to go to blackanddecker.com. Okay, so here it is, and I'm definitely not logged in, so ask me to log in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy two cookies, and I did take a quick look at this before doing the video. I'm going to copy the session ID, and then I'm going to jump into edit this cookie, and I'm going to take the session ID from the one that was captured in Alma. Now remember, that was when my victim, which is me with my other hat, was logged in. And we'll take that and we'll submit it. And then I'm going to jump back and I'm also going to take the AT cookie. So this AT cookie is created once you log in. So we'll copy that guy. Now over here we don't have an AT cookie because it hasn't logged in. So let's just create a new cookie. We will call it AT. Let's whack in a value like so. Submit the cookie. Now keeping in mind that I am the attacker and I am effectively anonymous. I am now going to refresh this page after submitting those cookies. And any moment now, here we go. Logged on as Troy Hunt. So what I've been able to do as an attacker is just simply get a victim to click on a link that has caused an error. Now, of course, that victim has to be authenticated to the website, but you'd probably target your communication a little bit more to try and get someone who may fit into that category. Now, what can you do as an attacker? Well, it's really up to what that website makes available to authenticated users. So the first thing we can do is start looking at my profile. So if I jump into here, obviously we could get age and gender and hometown, which I haven't filled out. If I jump into edit an account, then we can start to get things like, uh, what else we got in here? Security questions. Uh, I assure you that this is a dummy security question. So, you know, we, we are leaking this information. My name, my email address, my phone number, clearly not my birthday, a whole bunch of other things as well. Should it be a shopping website, and I'm not sure what sort of facilities these guys do expose, I could then go through and start buying things and adding them to carts, etc. And really do just about anything that an authenticated user could. So like I said, I will get this reported to Black & Decker and they will get it fixed. It is just a very, very easy misconfiguration error, but I wanted to show how much damage can be done as a result of something that's just misconfiguration. Now the other thing about this is that this can easily happen when a release process goes wrong. Well, not so much goes wrong, but one little bit is missed. So maybe what they did is they normally have Elma nice and secure, and then once they just made a little change, and now we have a problem. So the thing about security is it really is an ongoing process. Unless you're sort of continually scanning and continually analyzing the website, you're going to have some pretty serious problems like this. So that should give you a pretty good idea of the risk and how easily exploitable it is. Uh, now again, Black & Decker will have this fixed by the time I release it. I will make sure they know that. And they are certainly not the only ones. If you do explore some Google Docs, you will find that there is a serious number of websites which are exposed, that do have exposed Elmar logs. Uh, so guys, do check your Elmars.